Haiti Revolution, the place where all of our leaders and members, well, not all of us, but some of us come together and discuss the politics of the week and what is coming ahead. And so Rosanna and Scott and Michael, good morning, Revolution, y'all. Good, good morning, morning Revolution. <laughs> there you go. I like it when you say it with some verbs, some enthusiasm. And it is indeed a very good morning, beautiful day here in New York City. Uh, and it's been quite a week. And uh, at the top of the week was the president uh, spoke to a joint session of Congress. Hey, and so uh, it was quite that, a speech, huh? Before we get into that, could we talk about the uh, um, our fund drive that, that, uh, that we just wrapped up? Well, we, the PW, uh, the People's World, just completed a, a fund drive. And I am really, really, really happy to announce that we have exceeded our goal. We've more than doubled it. Wow. It's around $110,000 we brought in. We thought we, it was going to be 50. And if you're watching and you're a member of the party, you should be really proud of yourself. And if you're not a member of the party and you're a supporter of the people's world, trade unionist, uh, just an average rank and file worker, if you're a, a mom staying at home, thinking about how we're going to put food on the table, if you're a dad, if, if, if you're you know, working construction or, or working at the Wendy's or wherever you're working, or if you're unemployed, this is the news source that fights for your interest, peoplesworld.org. And we were able to complete and double our drive. So thank you, yes, everybody. thank you, everyone. Yeah, yes. the generosity of the working um, class. This is yeah. beautiful. We rose to the occasion. Thank you, revolution. <laughs> thank you, revolution. You know, you can't have a revolutionary movement, Lenin said, without revolutionary theory. He forgot to mention you can't have it unless you have some revolutionary finances. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really, 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 mm -hmm. really. It's a capital question. <laughs> and Marx, Marx wrote that book, Capital. He wasn't joking. Anyway, so thank you, everyone. So part two, the president and uh, spoke to, it was quite a speech. I listened to it this morning, Rosanna. And I thought that uh, there was some there was some important things there, you know. Did you get a chance to listen to it? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Definitely did. I feel I the same so. way. Yeah. What what struck you about it? Well, a couple of things. Uh, one, when he says trickle down theory never worked, I thought mm. that was really really key. Uh, I thought also when he talked about the white supremacy is terrorism mm. or domestic terrorism, something like that, the violence yeah. against women, addressing yeah. a lot of the issues that the movement has been addressing and has pushed to be addressed. The issue of poverty. I know the Poor People's Campaign has been pushing, you know, that as a central focus and, and, uh, and addressing the issues. So I thought that those were really important. I was a little concerned about the foreign policy, still sort of uh, uh, really, I mean, I'm glad he's pulling out of Afghanistan, even for my own personal, for personal reasons, as well as just the, the, you know, the people of Afghanistan who have lost so many lives. And, um, it, but, and then other, you know, sort of, I don't think there's any need to be aggressive. I think diplomatic relations will get us much more uh, uh, favorable uh, working conditions or working together collectively as a world movement. There's a world um, power to be able to, to um, just be able to you know, get along and do the things that we need to do globally. Stop yeah. interfering with other countries. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of those for one. <laughs> Michael, did you listen to the speech? I mean, what, what do you think uh, with respect? I know foreign policy uh, is one of the things that, that interests you. Did you, I know that there were some new things in the speech, but did you see anything new there? Well, yeah, I watched it live um, and, and 
of course, I'm also disappointed in the foreign policy, which I mean, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, I guess I was shocked in a good way about um, how he called white supremacy uh, terrorism. I was, uh, I was giggling a little bit when he was talking about healthcare and uh, taxing the rich, uh, rich people paying, uh, paying their share, you know, the millionaires, billionaires. The camera kept panning over to Bernie, said, you know, as if ABC, I was watching ABC, as if they were saying this is what Bernie was saying, and now he's saying it. So I thought that was good, you know, and this isn't the same Biden that I remember. I'm not very old, but uh, that I remember from, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And that's not that Biden is changing as a person. You know, he probably still believes what he believes. But the people's movements have really changed the, the political moment, you know, the defeat of Trump. And then uh, the, the kind of people's reaction to uh, Trump saying that the, the elections were a, a, a sham, you know, and um, then, of course, the January 6th attack on the Capitol and the people's response to that, you know, the response to defend democracy against the fascist danger. I think that's kind of given uh, Biden a wake up call and saying, OK, you know, I'm going to have to govern a little bit differently um, to, to please these people, you know, who put me here, because it was a, I think he understands it was a broad movement that defeated Trump. Um, and I think he's going to have to respond, you know, in terms of health care, in terms of immigration, which I think he needed, uh, that was lacking definitely in his speech, his immigration uh, plan and how to get there. I know that was uh, some of the critique. Um, and then also on uh, climate change, you know, the, get, uh, the, the climate change, he had that climate uh, summit with other world leaders. And so, you know, how exactly are we going to get there if, co if Congress doesn't approve it? You know, that I think that was also lacking. But overall, I, I was pleasantly surprised with it. Um, and we're going to have to keep fighting like hell to get these things implemented, starting with the PRO Act. Right. Scott, I think uh, uh, Rosanna kind of hit the nail on the head with respect to his comment uh, about the end of, uh, not the end, but he said, uh, trickle down don't work. It has to uh, go from the bottom up. Is this the end of, that was Reagan <laughs> and the beginning of uh, austerity and, 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 and what the intellectuals like to call neoliberalism. Is this the end of neoliberalism and well, the, the, the beginning of a new economic framework? In a certain sense, it, you know, it has been argued and, and I think um, not uh, incorrectly that uh, the end of neoliberalism uh, as an order, uh, a sort of uh, global or imperial uh, capitalist policy consensus uh, occurred already in 2008. That that system was broken in 2008, and there's been this there's this ongoing struggle of of over what comes next. Is it going to be uh, a more democratic, you know, alternative, or is it going to be a you know a fascist? Uh, order uh, that, that takes the place of neoliberalism. And certainly um, Biden's speech was a major uh, recognition that the momentum uh, is behind uh, the, the democratic option. Um, and uh, the comment on white supremacy, I think was you know, also really, really important. I agree with, um, with Rosanna and Michael. Uh, you know, we, our party's been talking for a while about the, the extreme right, the need to decisively defeat the extreme right. Um, and there are really, I think, three or four main components of that. The top three would be, um, you know, breaking down the, the, the white supremacist terrorist kind of infrastructure of that, uh, of the Trump movement, um, winning real uh, big voting rights reform, one moving toward one person, one vote, uh, and winning the PRO Act to, to democratize workplaces. And, you know, all three of these are things that um, the Democratic majority uh, is, is pushing uh, actively for it. I think that's hugely promising. Uh, but there, there's work to be done for sure still. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 hold up. 2008, there was uh, 2007, the recession, uh, subprime ripoff, banks collapse. Okay, so that was the end of, uh, that was a big thing, but Obama, eight years, uh, and then you had uh, Trump. They were still basically operating within 
the old economic framework, weren't they? Uh, uh, I think. I mean, yes, in the sense that there was a holdover, right? There was there nothing else had been found in a certain sense yet. There was no um, no new consensus, no new framework had emerged, um, but they, they were divergent. Um, certainly the Affordable Care Act uh, was a step toward the kinds of, of sweeping, you know, democratic reforms that we're seeing now, um, just as, you know, the, uh, the Tea Party and then after that, the, the Trump regime were a strong push toward the, the fascist alternative. Um, but it was kind of like Trumpism was, first of all, Obama was a grand compromise. He was trying to get that kind of thing going on. And they said, no, 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 no. What's his name? The head of the Senate. Oh, yeah. No. First day, uh, he said, we're not oh. going to give you anything. And they didn't. And then Trump got elected and it was neoliberalism on crack. You know, it was like the epitome of trickle down, but it all kind of Except with, with all, also with new features, um, the, the protectionism, the extreme nationalism, the, the skepticism about kind of global alliances, that is a, a very strong break with the neoliberal um, uh, tradition, even with, um, with the sort of neoconservative. Uh, well, I think it's important to, to I, at least, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm I'm thinking it this way, uh, neoliberalism would have continued if the people's movement hadn't made shifts, hadn't learned the less, some of the lessons. So it's really, it goes back down to, or not down, but it goes back to the people's movement has made this possible. It's the lessons that, that all of us have learned from these last six years of experience of what needs to be done and not fall for the same lines. This is why trickle down isn't going to work anymore because people are not falling for it anymore, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, right. I agree with that. Right, and 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 you know, uh, January six scared the hell out of them, all of them, all of us too. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you know and I, I think it shook. You know, on the one hand, you had the tremendous movement of the last year. Black Lives Matter, the strikes, strike wave that took place. Remember that? Don't forget about that. Teachers, mm -hmm. auto workers, mm -hmm. strike wave, and and uh, the immigration protests and the women's movement. You had all of these movements coming together and interacting and converging and reconverging and and then, but also you had a mass movement on the right. You had a mass movement on the right, and 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 and. and they didn't want to accept democracy and the, the bourgeois democracy. Okay, yeah, it was, but they didn't want to accept it. And so they tried to overthrow the government. And that scared the hell out of mm -hmm. the powers that be too. You know, I think or at least a section of them. And, uh, and so I think it, it, it helped propel the, uh, the uh, policy changes with respect to that have been, because a lot of this stuff was Bernie's platform in 2016, uh, Michael. Sure. And, uh, you know, people, I mean, that, that, that started way back then. And, and, and now they, I think that they feel compelled because of the people's movement, as Rosanna was saying, to implement it in a very vigorous way. Why? Because they got to win the midterm election. Michael. I think, that, and I also think that, um, not that I, I, I don't have any illusion that the majority of American people are out there saying, oh, the system's called capitalism or neoliberal. I don't think they use those terms, but I think the pandemic economy on top of all of Trump, Trump's crazy nonsense, you know, his mouth and his racist, racist policies and, you know, anti-people, anti-planet policies. I think just all of that on top of the pandemic economy over the past year has woken people up to yeah. say, you know, whatever we have isn't working. Whatever we have isn't mm. working. And I think Biden has heard that cry and said, you know, I've got to make some changes, you know, swing Bernie's direction, maybe take some notes from him uh, to move forward. Yeah. And there's a really okay. thing in what Go you ahead, said. Scott. Go ahead. 
Um, so uh, you mentioned these these two mass movements, the one, the, the people's movement and, and the, the far right movement. I think a, a mistake that, um, you know, we sometimes see people making in their in their political analysis is to think of the capitalist class as monolithic and to think especially of uh, the sort of moderates or centrists or sometimes called neoliberals or whatever as the representative of the whole capitalist class. So, you know, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, um, Biden for some people uh, as like the real face of capitalism um, when that's, it's, it's really not that at all. The two dynamic forces are, as you point out, the movements, this, this people's movement demanding democratic change and the far right movement, um, you know, trying to, to crush that and, and, and roll it back. Um, and this, you know, democratic section of the ruling class, uh, centrist, moderates, liberal bourgeoisie, whatever you want to call them, um, are, are caught, right? They, they, they can shift both ways based on which movement is stronger. Um, and they're, they're not the defining force in, in politics right now, I don't think. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the most important thing that happened during these 100 days, in your opinion. The most significant development that, that, that occurred uh, in a positive or negative way. So I'll start. Uh, for me, it was the passing of that part of the legislation that's going to eliminate child poverty. Well, it's not going to eliminate it. It's going to cut it in half. That tax credit, really, really important. That's going to be a boom uh, for a lot of working families, a lot of families with single parents, single mom or single dad. And I just think that that's huge. That was put forward by one of the uh, women Congress uh, persons from Connecticut, Connecticut, Rosa Delario, is that her name? Delaro, yeah. Delaro, and it became part of that legislation. Very important. Uh, Rosanna, in your opinion, most important thing, positive, negative, that happened during these 100 days? Well, I would agree. The, you know, the, the stimulus package, the, the money that people received because you can feel it. You can feel it in the air that people were, you know, desperate or just not knowing how, you know, whether they're going to get there. Some kind of um, some kind of assistance in some way. It, it was getting down to the wire for a lot, a lot of people. So I really feel that that's that was key. Okay, Michael. I think um, Biden's support which really started uh, with his endorsement of the uh, organizing workers in Bessemer, Alabama. Mm. And uh, regarding the PRO Act, he said, send it to my desk, which of course mm. was, the, was the slogan of the AFL-CIO's big uh, phone banking week for, for the PRO Act. And so I think union support from the president during this time, during the pandemic economy, I think is the most significant. Wow, okay, good. Uh, Scott? Uh I, I think both, it's, it's hard to choose. I think both of those are incredibly significant uh, and positive. I think maybe for me, the most significant thing is that um, he, and, uh, he and Vice President Harris were inaugurated uh, on time, uh, that the orderly uh, transfer of power according to the will of the people happened despite the best efforts of, of the extreme right to stop it. Um, uh, that the, the awareness um, as you mentioned, that they grew around that of the of the threat to democracy uh, is is extremely significant. And on the negative side, the the Republican reaction, uh, these attempts to um, drastically curtail voting rights in something like 30 states, as well as these new laws to um, punish protesters, um, you know, that's the the other side of this, and and that's extremely dangerous. They're trying to outlaw protesting, Rosanna. Mm -mm. We're not going to have it. Huh? We're not going to make it happen. We're not going to let it happen. No, no. no if you remember, if you remember the curfews that were set in place when the the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, you know, in, in support of um, 
no, not in support of, but you know, protesting the killing of George Floyd and others, there were curfews that were set in place, and people said no. We, you know, we're mad. We, we, you know, we want justice. We want change. So I, it's not going to happen. Some you know, of us it, got some of us got trapped on the Brooklyn Bridge because of that <laughs> that curfew. Yep. Yeah. I had a question. They wouldn't let, they wouldn't let y'all go home. Another really positive thing that happened during the 100 days was the conviction of Chauvin yep. in, uh, in Minneapolis. No, no question about that. But one of the negative things maybe was uh, the most negative, in my opinion, was uh, the bombing yes. of Syria that took place. You know, that, that was not good. Not good. Any other negatives you want to mention during the 100 days? He promised to do something with student debt immediately, and that didn't happen. The 50,000 or 10,000, whatever he initially promised, it wasn't mm. done in the first um, 100 days. He's also okay. ratcheting up the, the, the saber rattling on China. I think even beyond where, where Trump was, you know, he's clearly framing. Uh, you're talking about winning America will win the 21st century, clearly fr framing us as being in a new uh, superpower war with uh, China and, and potentially yeah. Russia uh, as well. And that's uh, terrifying. Um, Man, I just don't understand why the ruling class in this country got, got this terrible uh, grip on their mentality, on their minds. This, this, about leading the world, we're the best in the West kind of chauvinism that, that why just can't you just live in harmony with other pe people in the country? Why you got to be the leader, you know? Um, just, uh, I just but, don't, don't get know, it, Rosanna. You know, Joe, this country is built on, by immigrants. It's comprised of immigrants of all over the world. I don't think you will not find somebody that lives in this country that is from another part of the world. So, I, 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 we are we are showing that harmony is possible because we are getting along here for the most part. I would say, you know, if it wasn't for the anti-immigrant propaganda, you know, this this country would would be a good would be a great country because we can show the resilience of, of uh, all of us coming together from all over the world and, and, and living in peace and harmony. I, so I, I, it's, it, uh, it still boggles my mind. I, I'm still processing that part of it, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, we, we can't forget that, that none of us are here. Well, many of us are not here from this country that makes sense. But, um, you know, we're all immigrants for, for the most part. I'm not discounting the, the, you know, the indigenous people. Of course, they're, they're the only original um, um, people here in the US, but the majority of us are immigrants. We come from all over the world. And we better hang together or we're gonna hang separately. Well, I mm -hmm. think that that does it. We want to invite everybody to work with us over the next 100 days, which will start on May Day tomorrow. Happy May Day, everybody. Yeah, happy May Day. You know, it's the workers' day, you know, fight for the eight hour day. We need six hour day, right? Isn't that what we're fighting for now? Six hours with no cutting pay? Before. And, and, huh? Should be four, based on how much activities yeah. since, since 1970. I heard that. I can live with that. Four hours a day, got an update. Well, that, that's, not, that's not for uh, that's not for people who work for the for the party. <laughs> we still get exploited by the working class. <laughs> we start tomorrow, May Day. Happy May Day, everybody! And on Sunday weekend, uh, we're going to have a program Sunday evening. Women fight back to PW, and uh, a number of other organizations, panelists are going to be talking about the struggles of working class women against unemployment and the effects of the COVID crisis. Um, and we're gonna be back here next Friday, same time.
same station. So until then, stay strong, stay safe, and stay in the fight. Take care. Happy May Day, everybody. Bye. Happy May Day, comrades.